there was a time in our history where our ancestors lived in an environment and they were victims in that environment the predator the oppressor began to refer to them as niggas. They did not refer them to niggas because of love. It was because of their domination, because of their control, because they were the slave masters and they developed a word to be used to show that domination, to degrade, to humiliate, to mock. And for over 300 years, well, actually longer because this word nigger was the norm all over this country, a part of normal behavior in the United States of America in regards to those of whom they call the once called Negro, the Negro people, the black people. It is ironic that in 2021, that the descendants of these slave persons, these descendants of and victims of Jim Crow and the Black Codes, it is ironic that the descendants would happily embrace this identity, this word, and they would change the uh, spelling N I G G A. N I G H A G A or whatever, and they would go into the history books and oh, th that means nigger really means Niger from the Niger River, and all types of excuses that they, the descendants, happily embrace the word nigger. Mm, it's a damn shame. Also during this period of time, our ancestors lived in fear because at any time, one of the races could blow up their church or kick open their door, rape the mother and lynch the father and all types of violence that our ancestors had to face, our ancestors had to endure from the oppressor. Again, isn't also ironic that in 2021, the descendants of these persons, they murder each other. The white man don't have to do a whole lot of work. They call themselves nigger and they don't mind murdering each other. Whether it is physical or whether it is verbal, they don't care. You damn nigger, I'm going to show you a thing or two. I got to show a nigger. I got to show how tough I am. They never get big and bad and tough with the oppressor with their enemy, the one who caused them to be a nigger, the one who gave them the mindset to want to destroy themselves. It is ironic. Why am I bringing this up? When I first came to YouTube, it is sad that black YouTube really is a very minute part of 
YouTube. You will see videos on YouTube talking about baseball, football, entertainment, or, or whatever. Uh, how to make a snowman or whatever. Uh, look at look at my dog Spot chase a ball. These videos get thousands and millions of views. But this small genre, this small sector of YouTube. I mean, if you get a million views, you're doing damn good, but that takes a long time in order to get to a million views. And you have other videos on YouTube. They can garner a million views in a few hours. But Google, YouTube, Spends a lot of time monitoring. What are y'all niggas doing on YouTube? So when I first came to YouTube. Even if you did not. Agree or. Or like another. Black YouTubers content. We would. Subscribe to each other. and Help each other out. When I first. Came to YouTube. There was no monetary gain. There was no. Uh, people were just out here trying to awaken the mind or give out certain information. That's what it was all about. It wasn't about praise and glory and money and dating and booty and whatever. I've seen very good YouTubers, their videos flagged by Google for hate speech and their content had nothing to do. It was just historical information that you could probably get out of a book from any library and they were flagging these wonderful informative videos down and they were, re were replaced with reality show information like Sarnetta TV, Tariq Nasheed and so many reality show type, pseudo history type channels. But Google, YouTube, I guess they view black YouTube as a threat because maybe one day the lion might wake up. Maybe one day the bull elephant will wake up. Maybe there is a fear. I, I don't know. But I do know this. They pay a lot of attention to a very minute part of YouTube. So here we are in 2021. And now we do the job that Google don't have to do. We can't get along with one another. We find reasons. And start flagging each other's videos and terminating and slandering, gossip, and we do this on purpose. So just like the slave master of the past, we take on the role, we take on the job that the oppressor used to do. There's no need for Cointel Pro. There's no need for Cointel Pro and the FBI and CIA. And all that. There's no reason for that because we've gotten to the point where we enjoy the destruction of ourselves. So I find myself in a bind because this gentleman here, I was not bothering him. And for some reason, I was on his mind. And he had so much hate. For us, because the reality's temple on earth is not just me, it's, it's us. He decided to false flag. He cannot show that I was using his material. He cannot show that I was using the material of his so-called wife. He cannot show that. He was given some videos by YouTube and made no attempt to try to look and see is YouTube being right about this? 
because his mind's so full of hate. We have so much hate for one another. So he comes on video and actually brags about it. Yeah, I did it. I did it. This is a shame. This is so pathetic. So now we doing the work of the pecker wheel. So this leaves me no choice. But to defend myself, I have no choice. I have to defend myself. Because this person thinks that he's so above the law. He's so untouchable that his channel can't come down. That he can't be flagged. He can't be touched. But for me, it's more than just about YouTube. It's about it's about hurt because that's what you have done. False flagging is assassination. It's cyber assassination. You want somebody dead. Sister Noble wants me dead. This man wants me dead. And I know I have I've done I don't I haven't talked about this man. And none of the videos flagged didn't even have this man name or his wife name in the video. Just malicious. So I shouldn't feel bad about contacting the Internal Revenue Service because we know that this man here, I hope that he has his, uh, what they call it, T's cross, his eyes dotted, because he needs an audit. He's made a lot of money over the years. Lots of money. Do you pay your taxes, sir? Are you making sure that you pay your taxes on, making sure that you report all your cash out and your, what's that other thing? Uh, 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 start with a P, Patreon. Report all your Patreon cash out, your, all these donations that you're getting and your YouTube money and all your sources. Your Did you report all your money that you made from all those debates that you was given? I mean, if you did all that, that's that's fine. So it's cool. You shouldn't have a problem with the Eternal Revenue Service looking into your finances. Because you went to Google and you thought it was fine and you laughed and giggled. Copyright infringement on me. You thought that was fine and dandy. And see, it's not the white man. It's us. But we use the white man for our benefit when he can benefit us for our dirt. We don't believe in using the white man to help us in our struggle to rise. We don't believe in that. I, I don't need no help from no white man. But when it comes to our dirt, snitching to the FBI, snitching to the police, snitching to Google, snitching to YouTube and doing dirt, we have no problem with it. It's a shame. It's a shame. But that's the life of the Negro who does not want unity. Just like Dr. Fresh Francis, Fresh Francis, excuse me, Francis Cress Wilson said, the Negro is childish. And Dr. Neely Fuller Jr. said, if you cannot get along civil, the Negro should not talk to one another. And this is true. This is why we find ourselves in the situation that we're in. We're childish. We're emotional. We don't know how to talk and get along with one another. So we shouldn't even mess with one another. You don't like somebody's opinion. You, you got to believe the way I do. So let's report him to the white man, right? 